Recently, I have been asked a question. What kind of a person can acquire an oncological disease? In what way are they different from others? A tumor appears when the person thinks like a cancerous cell, I answered. <coughs> it appears when we renounce love. Man consists of body, spirit, and soul. If we do not worship God, we will have to worship one of the three components. This is what we call sin, renouncing God for the values of body, spirit, and soul. The sin of worshiping body is evinced as coveting. The sin of worshiping spirit shows as anger. The sin of worshiping soul is called self-indulgence. Worship engenders attachment. Attachment engenders aggression. The aggression accumulates and results in self-destruction. All this is fertile ground for the cancer tumor to bloom on. Inner egotism that is evinced as lack of love for God and as worshipping the human self inevitably leads to subtle energy falling and, consequently, to impaired immunity. <clears throat> what we call capitalism can be considered as a cancerous tumor on the body of humankind, and this is a perfectly logical phenomenon which appeared in the post-Christian world about 400 years ago. Taking all the facts into account, this must have happened in the following way. One of the most important requirements of any religion is acceptance of God's will. This means understanding that man's will is collateral, that man is part of the organism called the universe. First of all, we must rely on God's will and accept it, and only then can we think of our own will. This is a pattern of thinking used by a healthy cell, which lives and works for itself, recognizes itself as a unique entity, but all that notwithstanding, it feels its secondary status and bends to the organism's will. The moment when the cell's will outshines the will of the organism is the point when the cancerous process starts. All world religions include the concepts of God's will and punishment for committed sins. Only God can forgive our sins. All man can do is to behave correctly, follow the commandments, and change for the better, thus rendering forgiveness possible. Such a point of view corresponds to the laws of the universe. The more significant a truth is, and the wider its scope, the more dangerous its wrong interpretations become. Christ showed that through changing oneself, man can discard sins. Through love for God, through turning to the Creator, and through deep inner changes, man can restore the energy of the soul and get rid of many diseases. Self-seeking human nature only saw in that some bakshi, an opportunity to get rid of sins without doing anything. The forgiveness of sins, which the priests practiced, was nothing else than replacing God's will with that of man. <laughs> Jesus Christ demanded that he be not called totally blessed, sinless. The more it holds that with his disciples. But the Pope of Rome was admitted sinless. As far as I know, the Russian Orthodox Church, as the body of Christ, is also held sinless. In the West, 
personal egotism blossomed. In the East, egotism was collective. The irrevocable turning point towards capitalism occurred in the era of the Renaissance. When the Catholic Church started absolving from sins for money by selling indulgences, the subconscious of the believers interpreted this in the following way. There is no need in God now. Man has replaced God totally. All affairs should be settled with a priest. Love and morality are not vitally important already, but money is top of the list, since it can absolve you from all of your sins. In order to survive and develop, any living being must have a clear picture of a developing world. Without such a model, any creature cannot survive. For human society, the most significant model of the world is given by religion. Scientific worldview cannot be deep and stable. One hundred years ago, we considered the electron as only a particle, little thinking that our body can be not only a physical, but a wave nature. What's worth mentioning, after destruction of the physical layers, the wave layers become even more active. And there you have it. Religious picture of the world included soul. It has long pointed out the secondary and even tertiary status of our physical shell. Whether people want it or not, but consciously or subconsciously, they perceive the world through the prism of a religious outlook. Atheists do so subconsciously, believers consciously. It is natural that people follow the concepts and emulate the patterns that religion inspires. <laughs> The process that started in the society when indulgences were introduced would, in a few centuries, be described by Nietzsche in a short phrase, God is dead. Given that love and morality are no longer the main landmarks for man, the society starts changing rapidly. Money is the basis of any economy. Financial torrents are controlled by bankers. Before the given point, the amount of gold stored in a bank and the amount of banknotes issued had been of approximately equal value, as the gold secured the corresponding money. Money had been a real equivalent of goods and mineral resources. After the morals had fallen, neither the religion nor the state could hold the bankers in check. When the amount of stocks issued by a bank is much higher than the amount of real valuables in its possession, this is nothing else than cheating and stealing from people. Instead of being the blood-carrying system, the bank network had turned into a blood-sucking system. This inevitably would have had to issue in a situation when the chief banks of many countries had become private-owned, irresponsible to the state. <laughs> Any tendency turns into a function, and the function becomes an organ. An aggregate union of all the organs amounts to a living being. The modern world cancer tumor is desperately fighting to survive at any cost, thus inexorably pushing humankind towards destruction. What they now call consumers' society in the West is a result of such a tendency. The leader in consumption that is, in cheating and plundering their own kind, is the United States of America. It is logical that the strongest opposition to religion appeared there. 
opposing the religious values of love and morality. It is not a sheer coincidence that an officially registered satanic church exists on the territory of the USA. It is in the USA that a movement is growing which postulates that Western democracy is impossible while Christianity exists. Total freedom from morality and honor was experienced once before in Sodom and Gomorrah. Now the same is waiting in store for those who live today. I jerk my head, trying to shake off my gloomy thoughts. I see the darkened sky and the lightnings flashing far away. A winding mountain road begins. I've got to be careful. I try to channel my thoughts into some other groove. <clears throat> there are simple rules worked out by life itself. For instance, you must not be in a state of stress for too long. Fear for the future, regrets of the past, grudges against one's family members, grudges against oneself, against one's fate, against the world around you, all these amount to a very strong and unbeatable stress which descends into the subconscious and gradually starts destroying our body and fate. A grudge or offense often arises from inability to find a solution to a given situation or from reluctance to try for some new variants. When you can do nothing, then you take offense. The same goes for irritation. We must never hold it bottled up inside. The energy of conflict must turn into action, not irritation. If a person's way is active measures, they will find a solution to any situation. The most important action and measure for a soul is saving our soul. By putting it right, we start changing the world around us. Even if presently we are unable to influence the situation, this does not necessarily mean that it will stay eternally unchangeable. Any problem can be solved. If today we cannot win tactically, we must seek to win strategically. Things now happening in Russia make many people indignant. But first of all, we must understand that these things are logical consequences. Engels once wrote that morality is out of the question when it comes to taking the proletariat to victory. <laughs> this mindset and this attitude later issued in dire lies to our own people and in mass self-destruction. When dreams of well-being are more important than faith, love and moral virtue, sooner or later it ends in big problems. <laughs> the pagan communist doctrine of hatred, plundering, envy for the rich could not have created a healthy society. A pagan formation can only be developing successfully with the givens of incessant violence and severe control. An idolater is only controlled by keeping him in fear. The fear in the Soviet Union began to disappear under Brezhnev's rule. It was at that time that faith in communism also started fading. 